they were famous here in Connecticut. Um, but they were ghost hunters, like they do exorcisms kind of along those lines. And that's always freaked me out. I mean, I believe it exists. I know it exists, but that is scary, not welcome. So I learned early from her that we can set boundaries to spirits. And so um, because that lady was in my life when I was born, because she's my dad's cousin, um, I've always known about that because that's scary. <laughs> that's not welcome in my house. Welcome in. I am so excited and tickled about the guest that we have with us today. You guys are absolutely going to love her. That's a spoiler alert. It's a her. But before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you feel like the world is a little overwhelming and you just can't keep up, you might want to sign up for our Friday morning email newsletter. It comes out every Friday morning. <laughs> What we do is we try to include the important events around the planet every week and good information that we think will help you along your journey. It's super easy to sign up. You just click the just link in the description box down below. It's super easy, super informative, super free. I think you're going to love it. Now I want to introduce you to my lovely guest. It's going to just tickle you about the conversation we have today. Welcome in Sharon Warner, Animal Communicator. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I oh, well, thank you so much. I am so tickled that you took the time to do this because we all have pets and we all want them to pay attention to us and listen to us, which they don't a lot of the times, so, which I want to get into. It's like, why do they listen to you and not to me? <laughs> but before we want to get started, you know, Sharon, if you, I have two pets, I have a dog and a cat, and I have conversations with all the time. Apparently, they're not listening to me. So we'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. Um, before we get started with what you're doing today, please fill us in on how on earth this started for you. Were you talking to the birds when you were little? Or when did this all begin, Sharon? It did happen when I was little. Um, I did talk to cats and dogs and birds, but I didn't know it was, and you know, I didn't know that other people couldn't do it. And um, you know, I had a, a tough childhood. Just you know, it it wasn't bad. My pe my parents were good people, but you know, I've had my traumas, and they're doing the best they could, but they had their own issues, and so I would escape to uh, actually I was thrown outside you know right? and we grew up in a time when kids you had to go outside right get so, out of the house I don't get... come in into the street lights come on exactly <laughs> yes yeah so outside I went me and my sister but when times were tough I remember um you know birds would talk to me like and you know birds sing okay yes we know they chirp but I could hear them talk there. I could hear their little songs. They're, they had English words in my head and they gave me great comfort when I was sad, angry, frustrated, whatever was going on in my little girl world. And um, I, in fact, I was able to see human spirits with my naked eye when I was a child. But, um, you know, my mom, She's deceased now, but she was from Ireland and she didn't have a great education. She had a lot of fears and she didn't understand that I could see things, that I could hear things and that I would know things. And that really kind of freaked her out that I would know things that I shouldn't have known. This is what I find out later as an adult. Her and my sister told me, yeah, you knew that and you never should have known. I'm like, oh, this is, I know. <laughs> And so I learned early that, you know, I can't talk about this. This freaked out my mother. It's, it wasn't supported. I had nowhere, no one else that supported this gift because it is a gift. So I kind of shut it down. And yeah. um, I'll never forget when I shut it down. I remember we were, I was down at a little stream. I don't 
I just remember saying, okay, I have to end this. I can't talk about it. I have to stop this. And it was like one of the saddest days of my life. Like my heart was breaking. Like I, it, and now that I'm an adult, I could see that I was, I wasn't living my truth. There was like big conflict, but as a little kid, you don't know this stuff. Just, you know, you're hurting, you know, you have to put this aside because, you know, you have things going on at home that doesn't support this. It actually makes things worse. It's not safe to talk about. So yeah. us little children, we're trying to stay safe and that we do, we have our coping mechanisms. And one of mine was. Don't yeah. Know. Yeah. You know, before you go on and I want to come back to how we systematically shut down the skills and abilities that we come in with. We do that to our children. And that's a subject we'll touch on in just a minute. I was struck when you said your mother is from Ireland. Yes. That is such a, a, a hot button for me because the Irish seem to have a wide population of mediums, mystics, psychics. And it, it I'm getting goosebumps saying that. No, and it, it, <laughs> Yes. And it's so funny that my mother had these fears. It was, you know, ignorance. She was born Irish Catholic, you know, 10 kids during, she was born during or right after, right after World War II, or I mean, it was during. And so there, and her, my grandfather was an alcoholic. He didn't work, you know, it was seasonal work. It was hard. She had a hard life, my mother. And I know that now. I can see that. I have compassion. I love her. I mean, she was difficult at home because of these things. But outside, if you and I were here, you'd love her. She was charming, fun, like typical Irish, great. But at home, you, I saw a different mom. And yeah. I understand now. It's not her fault. She did the yeah. best. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's like when I think about my grandparents or and the fears that they had developed over the course of their life, it's it's a very similar thing. And in my my opinion, this is programming, you know, but everybody thinks about it differently. You know, it's like, oh, so, so let's move on to you could hear the birds, you yeah. could hear the words of their songs. Um, Can you? Can you kind of describe, because the, for those of us who don't, that sounds like, well, I don't get it. How does that work? Would it be, would you actually hear the, the sound in your mind? Would you just perceive it? Would it just be kind of like an image? Yes, they would talk to me. I, I remember walking um, in like a wooded area behind my, on my house and they would be, you know, Sharon, it's okay. It's okay. Come on, watch me. And let's sing a song. And everything, you know, you're you're safe. Let's have fun. This is a good place. And you don't worry about what's going on at home. It's okay. And, you know, let's dance or just watch me flit around. You know, it was like having your own private TV <laughs> outside. Oh, I, I want that. I want that today. <laughs> Right. I want somebody yeah. to say, Kimberly, it's going to be okay. <laughs> well, you know, that's where I, I have to say, like, you know, now that I know I have this gift, I've been doing it for years. I've had days where, you know, something happens, right? Life happens, a bad day, whatever. I have a fight with my boyfriend or whatever. And I'm very down and I'm stuck in that, like, scared, angry mode, whatever. And do you know that Mother Earth, Mother Nature will come along and she'll, like, fly a hawk in front of me or you know, the Cardinals will be like da, 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 in front of me. And like, just to like light in my mood and get me out of that funk. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, Mother Earth and critters that are making me laugh and bring my energy back up. You know, I don't need to stay in that funky area too long. You know, there's a time for it and process it, move on. And they're just so good to me. I mean, I think they're good to everyone, but I notice these things because yeah. of yeah. So you had that sad day where you shut it down. And my belief system is that we all come in connected. Yes. We all come in. And of course, I can, you know, I can remember flying when I was a little kid, you know, I'd go to sleep and I'd fly around the house, you know, that sort of thing. I think all of us, if we were true, true with ourselves, we would say this happened to me, or I used to hear this or used to there. And then there's this kind of you know, come around five, six, seven, you know, there's pressure. 
Yeah. There's societal pressure to shut that down. You're making it up. You don't have imaginary friends. There's no way the birds are talking to you. Right. You know, st stand up, straighten up and square away and knock off this nonsense. And then, so you decided to shut it down. And how did that work out for you? Well, I mean, I had to keep quiet about a whole lot of things. It wasn't just that. So it just became the norm for me. But what I would do is since I had that knowing, that knowing of what's going on just continued. And so I just, and I kept it in the back of my mind. I was like, hmm, I was right about that. Hmm. Or I sense there's danger in doing something, you know, me and my friends shouldn't do something and I don't do it. And sure enough, the knowing was right. Mm -hmm. Bad happened and I didn't need to participate. So that's what I used it for, I guess you could say. Um, and maybe there's other terms for it, but yeah, that's, that's what I have to say about that. That's so it just, um, you know, I have to say, I don't have a lot of memory of my childhood, little bits and pieces come. I've been, I've had 10 years of therapy. I've seen a therapist. So I've like been peeling away the layers and more and more comes where I talk to my sister and she reminds me of stuff. So I think that's part of the coping mechanism too, is just, I disconnected. Yeah. And I want to point something out because I've had a few what, what you would call spiritual experiences or spiritual incidents is nothing like you do. But I want to talk to, to the viewers right now. If you haven't had that, there is a huge difference between thinking something and knowing it. Yes. And when I get, when I've had these spiritual experiences, it is not thinking. It is, oh no, I know this. Yeah. And it's a weird thing. It's like there's no wiggle room. It's no, I know that. And yeah. the certainty, at least for me, and I. Th and by the way you're shaking your head, I think it's the same for you. It's like, it is so concrete in your experience and in your understanding that there's there's no, there's no other way it can be. It is a knowing. Well, yes. And I had to relearn it. Oh, you did. Because I disconnected it. Mm-hmm it off it was kind of there in the background like I said but I completely disconnected or not it partially it partially stayed with it but I disconnected on all so many levels because I had sexual abuse I had difficult parents um you know we were driven to be you know independent girls and you have to study so like I went in a different direction and it's okay. I mean, that's, I think that's part of my journey and that's okay. I accept it. But what happened was that I, um, I was married, my first husband and you know, it, he was never around. It was, I was lonely in my marriage. So I decided, you know, I wanted a dog cause I needed a man in my life who's <laughs> around. So, I mean, so I'm like, I don't want another human man. I mean, I, I loved my husband, but I needed companionship. So I adopted a dog and I'd always had cats. I love cats. And um, this dog, you know, was peeing in the house, peeing in the house. And it got the husband upset. And, you know, because some of the people please are like, you know, I don't know how to train a dog. So I, I got so desperate. I hired an animal communicator and she talked to the pets, talked to the dog. And I was like, oh my God, that is so cool. So cool. Like, I can't believe it. So I don't know, a few years later, still have the dog, great dog. He's my heart dog. He's deceased now, but I was going, I ended up divorcing the, the ex-husband and um, the same animal communicator. She was doing a, um, a course on teaching animal communication. So divorces are not fun and I needed something fun to do. And so I signed up for her one day workshop. And during the practice, it was so easy. Like there were other people in the class and are like struggling to connect with animals, but it was so easy for me after her exercises. It was like she turned on the switch again. And I was, I had started my therapy. And so I was learning with 
therapy, how to connect with my body. Because remember, I disconnected on so many levels because of what had happened growing up. And so I was learning how to trust that voice again. So yes, you're right. It's difference between thinking and knowing I needed to relearn that again. And I had to take very little baby steps on learning that. But I'll, I remember my therapist saying, just go with, and I can't remember what the exercise was, but just go with what the first thing is that comes to you. And that's how I applied my animal communication. After I took that workshop and I started like practicing with people's that I knew their pets, you know, um, I just go with the first thing that comes to me. And I've learned through practice that I'm a very visual person. Yes, I hear pets. I feel them in my body if I really need to figure out a medical issue. But I get snippets of visuals either in their life, my life, words, I'll get words. So, um, you know, relearning how to trust that voice was very important with my journey. And anyone can do it, even if we disconnect for whatever reason. It's I think you've brought it up in some of your other interviews. It's a muscle. You know, you got to work, you got to practice it. You know, you do a little, you try this little exercise, you try that little exercise. What's going to work for you? Everyone's different. We all have our own gifts. So just finding what's right for you. And maybe, you know, you have more than one, you know, strength and you develop it. You know, I dabbled with, you know, doing people sessions. Um, I did do that for a while. And I've done, you know, mediumship. Um, I've played with crystals, love crystals. Um, so I've, you know, through the years, I've, you know, studied with different people and practiced different things. But I just feel right now, my life, this point where I am, I really feel like animal communication is where I am. I'm most comfortable with, I think that's really my strength. Um, and sometimes the mediumship comes in, sometimes deceased people who are in spirit with the deceased pet will come in. And because I have that practice, I can give a message to somebody, um, you know, a deceased person. I can give it to my, the client that I'm talking to. So my mind just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm curious about is that you're going to an animal communicator and then you thought, oh, I'm going to go take the class because that sounds like fun. And that's a clue, folks. Yeah. When something sounds like fun, that means yeah. you're supposed to go do it. It doesn't matter how silly it seems or how crazy or outside of the box. What I'm wondering is when you got there and you started going through the exercises, did you have a feeling of, oh, I so know this. I just, you just kind of slide right in it because you'd been doing it as a child. I just, um, gosh, it's so long ago now. Yeah, I, I, I just, it felt natural. Mm -hmm. Resistance. And I would like look around the room. People are, I, I don't hear anything, you know, to the teacher. What am I supposed to be doing? And I'm just like, you know, the flow was, I was, I think I was practicing on her cats, the teacher's cats and her horse. And, and it was easy. And I was like, oh, I'm so blessed. Thank you, God. You know? Oh, yeah. It's just fun. I would imagine it's so fun. I mean, <laughs> communicating as a medium, communicating with humans. I mean, that's interesting and, and cool and that sort of thing. But animals are so loving. Yes. They're, they're so pure. Well, no, 100% love. <laughs> yeah. That you get to talk with, you know, creatures that are pretty well centered, you know, that are centered. Okay. So you go to this class. You, you, it's like easy. How, I mean, so where do you go from there? I mean, did you start thinking, well, I'm going to do this or how did it, how did it go? You know, my issues growing up was I had like no self-esteem, none. And so I started dating this guy who was great for my self-esteem. I mean, God, we're not together anymore. Um, you know, but it, he was there for a purpose. He really, he's like, you know, you have a gift you should be charging people. And I'm like, really? You think so? No. You know, I, I truly doubted myself and my abilities. So um, he was into psychics and he mentioned the psychic fairs that we had locally. And so I, I went and the guy who was in charge of it hired me. And, 
you know, the thing about the psychic fairs is I learned how to work within a set period of time. I learned what was important to people. Um, and I practiced, you know, I strengthened that muscle, you know, it develops. And um, I didn't make any money. And I worked full time and I was devoting entire weekends to that. And it was exhausting, but it was what I needed to do at the time. And, um, you know, I, that's where I, I met other mediums, other psychics. And that's those are the people I played with. Like I learned how to do other things and I had the camaraderie I needed, you know, because remember, I didn't know any. So I guess my mother was, you know, don't know, mm -mm, scary, you know, and my dad, you know, he's like one of my biggest fans now, but, you know, he really was doing his own thing. And so um, it was nice having that family, my peeps that I needed at that time. And that guy, you know, he, I was still with him and he was behind me 100%. And it was what I needed. You know, sometimes we just need that little personal coach, you know, is like, go give that a try. Come on, you can do it. You know, and that makes you go a little farther and expand. And that's, I had that. It was beautiful timing. So you had a whole new friend group, a whole new support system. And it was probably, you know, it probably was a lot of fun for you because now you're talking to people who understand Yes, the things that you do, and yeah. you're probably very excited about and you guys are ex talking about things that you're interested in. And that's a lot of fun. Yes, yes. Because I had that day job, my day job is a paralegal. That's so not spiritual. It's so yeah. not spiritual. It's a good job. I still have it. <laughs> so grateful that it's such a good job, but it's not spiritual does not feed that that I need. So what's your next question? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm curious about, so you started doing the psychic fairs where, were people bringing their animals in or did they just sit down and say, I have a dog at home and this is what I want to know, or I have a dog in spirit. How does that work for yep. you? So um, what I need is a description and typically a photo. So um, people can bring me a hard copy if, the, if it's in person, which I don't do a whole lot of in-person sessions now. I don't do the psychic fairs anymore. Um, I I decided that I needed to make my own hours and um, make more money for the time I'm doing this. So, or at least make some money. <laughs> right. It was seven dollars a session. That's all what I was getting at the time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but that's okay. It's what I needed, and they were good people. It was all wonderful. But anyway, so people needed to bring me a picture or I could go with a description, especially with cats, because cats are all the same, except they're different colors. Dogs are different. Um, there's so many different sizes and breeds and colors and all that. And horses, I never had a horse. So I need a picture of a horse because I don't know all the different kinds of breeds of horses. <laughs> And so, and I've talked to rats. I have a rat client and I've talked to snakes and talked to spiders and ducks. I have a duck client. Um, so nowadays people email me a picture of their pets or text it. And I need the name of the pet and I need the name of the client, whoever it is that owns, I hate to use that word, the person, the pet's person, people. Those are my coordinates when I connect. So at the, the fairs, that's what I had. And, and even now that's what I use. And so I connect with the energy and, you know, typically, you know, I need the person to have an open heart. I, I, I welcome skepticism. You know, I want people to be skeptical, you know, cause there's all kinds of phony baloney people out there. And um, even though I don't believe that I'm phony baloney, but um, it's good to be skeptical and but have an open heart, be open to this process. And because the more open the person is, the more comfortable the animal is with sharing whatever it is they want to share. Some pets, when I first connect, are very, you know, they'll talk right away. Some are kind of hesitant. You know, some are give me, you know, really complicated information. Some is just a little you know, a little snippet of a picture or a word. It depends. It's like all over the place. 
And I can't generalize. I can't say that, you know, some animals are more complicated than another. They're all different, just like us people. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking with someone or interfacing with their pet, let's say it's a pet that's alive, like mm -hmm. still in physical, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that a pet will say? Because, you know, it's like, I don't know how deep they're thinking. <laughs> it's I, a, just like, you know, I want to be fed earlier. Or is this this long thing of, I think that there's, there's issues around the house that we need to resolve. And I have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I need to clarify one thing that um, comes up a lot is ten, people tend to humanize pets. Yeah. Oh, well, of course we, we, we decide that they have all the range of emotions as we do and that they should feel exactly the way that we do. They don't. Yeah, they don't. No, it's, it's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But they have, they have emotions. Yes. There's the, but nothing like people and people try to put on their emotions onto the, their pets. Um, thinking about yesterday, I had a horse client and she was like, the horse had a very serious mouth issue. I forgot what it's called. And she actually, she told me when we first started the session, she said, you know, I was skeptical last time I talked to you because, you know, I just thought this was a bunch of woo woo. And, um, but, you know, you hit the nail on the head. My horse has this very serious illness that has something to do with the teeth. I, I can't remember, but anyway, um, and she said, now I need to know before you even connect with him. Actually, she didn't know I was already connected. But she said, before you even connect with him, I need to make sure it's okay to talk to him about this. Because what if he has anxieties about, you know, the surgery or, you know, she was like treating her horse like a two-year-old that he might have, you know, real fears like she might have, which I understand. Um, about the potential for surgery. And so I said, just just hold on a second. Let's I said, you know, they it's not that complicated. Um, I'd like to, you know, explain to the horse the pros and the cons and and explain, you know, let's see what the horse has to say. You know, because animals will tell me if you know they want a procedure or if they don't want a procedure, they will tell me what they want or don't want. And they're very clear about it. And it's up to the human if they want to agree to it or not. And there's really no wrong. I had to tell this lady, there's no wrong. You don't have to do what the animal is telling you to do. So the horse was right away, right away. I want the surgery. If she can afford it, I want it. I'm in so much pain. I can't, oh. you know, it's, I, and I could just feel like the nerve endings in the, the horse's face were like all sensitive and it, it had this nasty taste in its mouth because it just couldn't chew properly and digest properly and it was in so much pain and it was not afraid of the surgery it knew it was going to be involved she kept on saying well it's a three-hour trailer ride to to the the surgery place and of course I don't care I will cross that bridge when I get to it if she has to like coax me with carrot cake to get me on the trailer, just do it. You know, it just, it didn't, it just wanted it done, be relieved of the pain. But then I've had other animals, you know, older animals who knew that they had like say cancer, you know, the dog that had cancer, had a, um, a lump and it was very clear. I can't, a tumor, cancerous tumor. If I do not want surgery, I do not want to be opened up. Do whatever you can to make me feel comfortable, whatever medications, natural stuff, whatever. But I do not want to be opened up. I don't want this person to go into debt to have to, you know, take care of this. And my quality of life is not going to be the same. Like, so I, I get, like, it depends on the animal, the circumstance. Like, they know, most of them, some of them are kind of clueless, but most of them know what's going on in their people's lives. Like, that horse, it was interesting, the, the, the one I just mentioned, like, it was like, if she can afford it, do it. And the lady was like, I can afford it, I can afford it, yes, I'll get it done, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and oh. then, then there's, you know, like, the horse, you know, some of the people are like, gosh, yeah, it's going to cost, like, thousands of dollars, you know, to do this surgery, and, you know, 
I can't tell you how many animals have told me like, it's okay. I'm not afraid of dying. You know, it's, I can come back if I really want to, you know, I, I don't want to have a life that I can't go to the bathroom on my own, or, you know, you have to hand feed me and give me drugs. You know, I want to go into the light where I can be pain-free and happy and watch you from spirit. And again, I can come back if I want to right away. And some do and some don't. So it sounds like the animals don't have the amnesia that humans do. They don't. Like we don't remember the afterlife. They remember it. Yes. I have not had one that I was, I've never had that conversation where they don't know about the light, but it's not like they ponder about the light or wish to be in the light. It's just kind of part of the conversation that I've gotten. Mm -hmm. It's just another part of the journey for them. Yeah. Yes. And that is another thing that I wanted to bring up. <laughs> you mentioned it is that we need to respect that they're having an animal existence. Like they're not having a human existence and they want to live life for example as a dog they want to go and go for their walks and be outside do the business outside except for the little small dogs they're okay with being inside but you know they want to have that experience I'm trying to think of how to phrase it and and sometimes us humans don't respect that well i think we maybe don't even think about it we think that oh the luxury is on the couch when they just want to be snuffling through the forest and smelling all kinds of stuff and digging things up. And yes, yes. My, yeah. my, my yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So I have so many questions. Yes, go for it. Okay. And they're, they're in no particular order. And I don't even know if they're connected. <laughs> <laughs> so you started opening up as a pet communicator. What I've learned from mediums is, and I've talked with a lot of mediums, even long before I did this channel, they when they first start opening up they're getting bombarded all the time you know with people coming in and waking them up and this and that then you know not too long into it they learn to set boundaries like no not now i'm my i am not doing business right now come back tomorrow between eight and five <laughs> you know that sort of did this happen to you when you started opening up did you all of a sudden get animals coming in from the spirit world that wanted you to communicate with their their past moms and dads or, you know, their, I can't say it was a flood, but um, periodically, I mean, it's ongoing, either a person or an animal will pop into my head. And I just kind of either I dismiss it, or I have to specifically say, no one's welcome right now. This is my safe place. I set strong boundaries, you know, because I have a, a relative who's now deceased. Um, she was, they were famous here in Connecticut, um, but they were ghost hunters. Like they would go, oh. go after demons and evil spirits. Like they do exorcisms kind of along those lines. And that's always freaked me out. I mean, I believe it exists. I know it exists, but that is scary, not welcome. So I learned early from her that we can set boundaries to spirits and so um, because that lady was in my life when I was born, because she's my dad's cousin, um, I've always known about that because that's scary. <laughs> that's not welcome in my house. <laughs> no ghosts allowed. <laughs> no well, ghosts, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I talk to my animals all the time. Apparently, they're not listening to me. They are. <laughs> Why do they keep doing things that we keep asking them not to do? If they know it, you know, it's like if they know what I'm saying, and I, everybody who is listening to this who has had a pet is saying, I told that cat 500 times not to do that. He still did it. Yeah. Yeah. Mine do too, even though I'm an animal communicator. Yeah. Well, the thing with dogs is they do it because they can. Like dogs are very... Um, I don't, I, I don't have a magic wand, Kimberly. I can't like magically change behavior. And with dogs and cats, it's behavior. Like you, you're doing something. You're not being a good alpha. Oh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I had like be consistent and learn the right terminology. And 
being a dog trainer is not my strength. I, I tell clients right away when there's a dog client and there's behaviors is not my strength. I don't have a magic wand. I could talk to the dog and find out what's what it's thinking, what's behind the the what's going on, and you got to take it from there. But they do, they do listen, kind of. I mean, they know what you're saying to them. But do if, they really like? Yeah, are they? Do when it applies to them, they mm -hmm. they listen. But if you're talking about you know your girlfriend, your friends, your you know what something else, it's yes. Yeah. All right, so. Clearly, you're not going to change the behavior of both my cat and my dog. <laughs> well, you know, some of them do listen. I have to say, some people tell me that their pets do listen. Mm -hmm. but I guarantee it. Well, you know what it is, is that, and most people probably have this, it's like, I believe they know that I'm not happy with what it is they're doing. They feel the energy. But, but they can, they want to do it anyway, you know, and it's kind of worth it. <laughs> Well, yeah, the reward is, yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, so when people come to you, and I'm, I'm sure that there's all kinds of different people with all kinds of different questions and this and that, but most generally, what is it that they're wanting? Is it they have a pet that's sick? Is they have a pet in spirit? Mm -hmm. what, do, what, what do you kind of see in your practice? And have you been surprised at anything in your practice? Yeah, I get surprised a lot. And that's the thing. I can't remember everything. But okay, so people come to me because um, a lot of time grief, you know, they're, they're past past. That's very oh. that's with closure, you know, um, which I, you know, everyone can understand that, whether it's a person or a pet, they're looking to connect. And there's a lot of, um, typically, there's a lot of guilt related to the passing of a pet, you know, if you have to euthanize your pet, that's never easy. And so, you know, people want to know they did the right thing. So we go over it in a session, whatever the pet has to say, whatever the circumstances are. When there's multiple pets, we go over the dynamics. Sometimes, you know, they're not getting along and we need to get to the bottom of it. And um, because I've had pets and been doing this long enough, I can give suggestions, you know, there's tools for people that they can try. And a very common one is injuries. So, you know, a lot of uh, horses, you know, people, um, when they have, you know, they'll put two horses in a pen, because they get along, but they'll be playing. And one of them will get hurt. You know, horses are big animals, they can really do damage to each other. So, you know, I'll, I'll never forget one client, she contacted me about her horse and he had an injury. And I explained to her that the other horse they were playing and the other one had jumped on its back, you know, it oh. kicked its back and how it happens. And so this client, knowing where the spot was, how it happened, she was able to get um, chiropractor and other do other medical things to heal that horse and now he's 100%. So, you know, being able to tell the client, you know, whether a certain modality or medications working or not working, it, that is a lot of the, of the sessions that are have to do with injuries. You know, animals will say, you know, um, you know, CBD is a common thing for pets to use for pain. You know, the animals will tell me, well, it works, but it wears off. And the people are like, oh, yeah, you know, I have noticed that. I said, well, you got to, you know, keep it consistent like we would do with our medication. You, you got to keep a consistent dose. There's So having those kind of conversations that you normally have, you know, with maybe your doctor or nurse or, you know, in your own mind about with your human body, it's I'm having a same I'm, I'm an interpreter, really, I think a lot of the time. You know, just telling people what is working with medicine. And that's got to be so valuable because particularly when you're looking at a horse, that's yeah. a huge animal. And yeah. we don't, our horses are not hanging out in our houses like our dogs are and their cats are. So if something's happened, most likely we're not going to have seen it. Right. I mean, that's incredibly valuable. So based on your experience and the time that you've been working in this field, when pets cross over, do they hang around for a while? Oh, yeah, just like people. Oh, yeah, a lot of them do. A lot of, you know, some will turn into your guide and they'll guide you on a certain aspect in your life. Yesterday, I was talking to um, a dog that was a one-eyed dog. It was so cute, um, who was in spirit. And um, 
said, you know, call on me if you need help with the current dogs. I'm your guide. I will give you suggestions. So I've had those kind of conversations. I've had some who tell me they do piecework. So you've probably heard of stories where, you know, people have been like stuck on the side of the road and flat tire. And then somebody shows up out of nowhere, like, and and then disappears and you never see them again. <laughs> so that's what these animals will do in um, animal bodies. Like I'm thinking maybe like me as a kid who was having a tough time who needed like the little oh. angels, you know, showing up that that's, I call it piecework. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so some of them will do that and some will reincarnate, but they're always, even if they reincarnate or they go off to other things, they're still connected to us because I believe we're all one. Yeah, we are. We yeah. just think we're not. So have you ever had an incidence or do you know of an incidence where a pet has transitioned and then reincarnated back in order to be an animal in that same family? Yes. Oh, you have? My own cat. Oh my gosh. What, was it a cat before? Yeah, he, he was my cat when I was married to the first husband and it was a she. It was an orange and white short hair she. Her name was Shelby. And she was run over by a car. So awful. I was so heartbroken. And, you know, life went on. And I was doing these psychic fairs. And I was friendly with this, this one lady. And she volunteered at a cat shelter. And I did not need another cat. I swear. I didn't. And she showed me these pictures of these little fluffs, you know, that just came in. Little baby kittens. Orange and white. And gingers. And... And I'm like, oh, that cat is so cute. One particular one. And it just came to me. I'm like, that's Shelby. Same, it's same soul. Same soul came back as a boy. Long-haired boy. Wanted to hang out with me more. Life was too short first time around. And had a long life. I named it as Shelby again because I just was, I just couldn't think of another name. It was Shelby to me. And I thought it was a girl because they didn't know what sex it was. So now he was Shelby the male, <laughs> but he was a great cat. I mean, I would love you to come back, Shelby. <laughs> but um, yes, I've had other clients, yes, whose um, cats or dogs have reincarnated. Yes, it happens. And I love that. I love that because, you know, you think you get an animal, you fall in love with them, and then their lives are shorter than ours. So, so you're really signing yourself up for heartbreak, future heartbreak. <laughs> That's what it is. And I had an incident, Sharon, where I had adopted a kitten who had been abandoned or lost its mother. So I had to bottle feed him. You know, I had to, I, I was working at a job and I would go home three times during the day to bottle feed him and get up in the night and bottle feed him. That cat was so loving because of the, that tenderness that we had. I mean, it was just the sweetest, lo most loving cat. And then eventually I had to say, okay, we have to put him down. You know, he was sick. He had whatever cats get, you know, I think it was kidneys or something. I can remember falling to my knees in the veterinary's office. I mean, it just, it crushes you. It just crushes you because we're so in love with them. And I always know, or what I believe to be true is when I transition, that cat's going to be right there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Waiting for me because we just were so, you know, it's like, I just love that cat still. Of course, I love my cats. You know, I'm, I'm a cat person. <laughs> I love my dog, but my cat has my heart. I mean, it's just like, there's just something about it. You know, like, I love my dog. I'm, I'm saying that right now, but there's something about cats for me. And I think it's the opposite for other people. You know, that maybe the dogs really capture their hearts and the cats are kind of like, Anna. <laughs> Everyone's different. I I love both my cats and dogs. So um, there's no wrong about it. That's mm -hmm. your cats. Yeah. Your current cat isn't the cat who was deceased? You know, I, I wondered that, Shum, or Sharon, I, I was thinking, show me the cat when you said that. Um, I've wondered that the personality is very different. Okay. You know, the personality is very different. So I, I'm not sure the vision that they're, they're almost the same visually, you know, that kind of long hair, orange cat, but this cat is a little less loving. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit, you know, 
a little bit more judicious with his affection. Shelby, second time around, was a little bit different than the first time around. Oh, well, maybe it could be. Place. Mm -hmm. He chose to have a different lifestyle, like yeah. a different cat experience. Yeah. Time around. He just wanted, we, he wanted to grow some more with me, but in a different way. You know, what's funny about the cat that I have now, Sharon, is I went a period of years after the girls left and I, you know, was traveling and just being, you know, a single solo person again after, you know, raising kids is I always knew, and I don't know how I knew this. I always knew that I was going to get an orange cat exactly like I have. And I always knew it and I didn't know why. And this cat showed up because my daughter rescued it from a construction site, abandoned cat and said, you know, mom, I got a cat for you. I'm like, what do you mean? He showed up that exact cat that I knew. Well, that's that we no, that cat was talking to you the whole time. That's why you kept on seeing that visual and that knowing. Oh, you never just, I still think it's the same cat. You know what? Now that you, and I have thought about that prior to this conversation. And now that you're saying it's like, gosh, of course it's the same dog on cat. It but is. It, it's different. It diff you're in a different place and he wants, is it a he or a she? I'm sorry. Um, He, he, so he wants to have a different experience. He yeah. loved adventure when he got out. It was great. What do you mean when he got out? Out of your, um, where you live now. Yeah. You know, one time he was gone for seven weeks. No, the and, most, yeah, the most recent one was 10 yeah. days. Loved it. I know. Comes back half, half the body weight, all skanky and wrecked up. But I just knew he dang well loved it. <laughs> He's not very good at it, though. He said he saw so many critters and mm -hmm. wall, really. He loved playing with the cricket or grasshopper kind of things. He said they're crunchy to eat them. Yeah. That sounds like the right thing. <laughs> okay. So I want to ask you, there are people right now watching you thinking, I want to talk with her, you know, about my animal. What kind of things can people come to you for that you feel like you can really be helpful for them? Like what kind of questions, what kind of issues, what kind of concerns, what really works with what you do? Well, um, real, there's no oddball question or situation with any pet. I, uh, I talk about um, grief, like I said, animals passing, um, even just the, the transition itself where you have a pet who's, we you know, end of life to make sure that they're getting the right care, you know, medical treatment, no pain. So I do those kind of sessions, injuries, even just you want to have a fun session and talk to your animal and see what they like to do or like to eat or, you know, you know, what's their favorite spots in the house? Um, you know, what don't they like? You know, is there certain people or um, things they don't like to do? I mean, those are fun too. And you know, when you're bringing in a new pet, you know, there's a lot of, um, I don't know what age, your age group are going to be watching this, but, you know, I know when I was 20 or 30 years old and I had my first pet, I didn't have any guidance. Like I didn't know what to feed animals, but I have now a new younger generation of clients. So I talk to people, you know, who are, this is their first dog or first cat. And, you know, I'm able to, I feel like I'm guiding them on, how, when to feel that, feed them or walk them, you know, what's important to pets. Not that I'm an educator, but, you know, I'm able to talk to them and connect to them, kind of fine tune what their interests are. And then, you know, give people the validation that they're looking for, you know, you know, I always knew that the, the cat, you know, didn't like the other dog in the house, you know, and so I'm able to like give them, you know, validation or so that's why they don't like that person because whatever happens, you know, um, there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of validating. So that's what I, I feel comfortable with and I do, but I, I don't, I, all kinds of questions come up daily. <laughs> it's so all are, do, do animals, and I, I think the answer is obviously yes, but I'm curious if some animals are more like little comedians and some animals are more serious and some animals are really outgoing. Yes. They crack me up all the time. Yes. And I'm hoping like when they tell me something funny, 
what cracks me up is when they tell me that, that their person has stinky breath. And I'm like, should I really say that out loud? And like, okay, here it goes. I spit it out. And sometimes there's quiet on the other end. And then the people sometimes laugh, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I got to be careful. If you do contact me, be careful if you want to really hear an answer or not. <laughs> right. Well, you know, my dog has stinky breath, so I'm just saying. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Depends on what he's been getting into. Right. Anyway. Oh, gosh. I'm wondering, do you ever get humans that come in? You know, either. Yes. And when deceased or even. You yeah. know, maybe old owners of pet. I don't know. You know, do they creep in there? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Both those instances. So, um, I'm thinking of a lady I had talked to recently. Um, she had a dog, has a dog, and her husband had died fairly recently, and he came through. Oh. You know, still watching over her and her her dog, and had a a wonderful message for her that he, you know he's still there still you know has her back and and supportive on everything that she was doing cuz she was going through some things and so um yeah i definitely people come through who are deceased not all the time but it happens or if you know some people will rescue an animal um from a shelter and I love it when they know a little bit about the history because, you know, a dog will tell me, say it came from um, a house that lived with an elderly person and the person died and, you know, that person's family couldn't take the animal for whatever reason. So they brought it to a shelter and this person, my client, you know, I'll be able to tell the person, you know, give a message from the elderly, uh, the, the old owner, you know, still watching over the animal, oh. sending love. You know, it's in a good place or be able to explain a little bit about a certain behavior, you know, because you don't know when you get an older animal, what you're getting into, it might have some certain quirks. So sometimes we can some shed some light on some things. Yeah. So yes, I definitely get messages from deceased people, but I'm not, that's not what I'm looking for. You know, I kind of have to change the dial a little bit if I want to connect with a deceased person is a little different energy than the animal, but I definitely can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what I want to do when I grow up. I want to rescue pets from owners who have passed. I just feel this like, Oh, I you know. know. Oh, I know. I want to, I want to open a place where there's domestic abuse and people can bring their animals. Like there's no exception. Oh. That's what I want to do okay well we'll be side by side I'll be like when if your owner died I'll take you yes and you'll be if it, things are rough at home I'll take you <laughs> it's animals come on don't give up your kids or animals come on in yeah yeah come on in I know we'll have a we'll have a blast wouldn't that be fun and then we can walk through the forest together and the birds will talk to us <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like a Disney movie <laughs> what was it Snow White that you still <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's so funny. This has been so much fun for me, Sharon. I've just had such a ball and learning about what you do has just been so special. So how do we find out more about you? Do you have a website? Can you tell us about that? Yes, it's communicator for you. All one word. Okay. Communicator for you. And you have all your services there. You know, yeah. cl clearly people can can schedule with you there. And I will have that listed in the description box down below. So if you have a pet and you want to know what's going on, you got a gal that can hook you up there. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time today. This has been so fun for me and so educational. I'm sure that everybody's going, ah, oh, this is so interesting. So thank you for that. Thank you, Kimberly. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. And thanks everyone for joining us. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this video. Coming up next, this is a good one, or you might really like this one too. Either one of them could be perfect for you. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe.